right, we've got a little Franklin update for you. We got the crankshaft out, got the bearings all apart. I took the counterweights off, they come off real easy. Not spun right off, it's just a giant U bolt that holds them up. I put a little mark on them with a center punch so I know which uh, weight they go on here, or which way they go. Um, crankshaft. She's a little crusty. She's got some pitting on here from this engine's been sitting for a long time. It was probably out in the weather, so it looks like some water got in there. And, but it is what it is. It's not like you can buy a crankshaft for a Franklin valveless anywhere. So right now I'm just trying to get everything cleaned up and I'll try and Get you set up here so I can show you what we got going. I already showed you the bearings, how bad they were, but I want to show you the crankshaft, how much play this thing had as it's sitting in the saddle here. I'll be right back with you. All right, I think I got you going here. That is the back and forth play in the bearing. So, as you can see, they were very loose. Both sides. I guess what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a, a flat piece of steel to go across this. And I'm going to measure down with some uh, depth mics. And I'm just going to compare that side to this side. And I'm going to get some wood blocking or cribbing underneath this crank here. And I'm going to try and, you know, shim the, the wood up so the crankshaft, I can try and get it. So it's where it needs to be with the main housing. That's the plan anyway. So right now I'm I'm still cleaning and trying to make a plan of attack. I did get some new bearing mater Babbitt material. And I got my old cast iron ladle out here. I don't know if this is going to be big enough. I might have to get a different one somewhere. And I got a little burner coming that I bought, so that's on its way. Now it's time to start measuring and getting set up. Once I get my cribbing set to hold my crank where it needs to be, maybe I'll screw it all together or something to make sure it doesn't move. And I can shim that, that piece up with some paper or something you know I can come up a few thousands at a time to try and get this crank straight in the bore once I get that set I'll pull the crank back out and like I said before I'm gonna leave I'll leave that side alone and I'll do this side first that way because that'll I don't know if you can see it but the crank kind of sets it side to side play it does have you know a little bit So that's the plan. We're getting things moving along here, starting to get some stuff gathered up. I don't think I have enough Babbitt material. That's six pounds. I bought six one pound bars. And I'm pretty sure I need to double or triple that order to have enough material to pour the two main bearing caps and the two saddles here. And that's not even, I haven't even got to the, the rod yet. She's rough, but you know what, I clean her up. This thing's like I said before, is just going to be running slow. It's just a, an old engine. It'll probably get run once a year, so we'll see. Hopefully this turns out and it'll be okay. If not, I don't think I can go down and order a new crankshaft anytime soon. So we got what we got and we'll deal with it. We'll keep you posted. Alright, 
this is for everybody following along in my bearing dilemma. I'll show you what I got here. I got my depth mics. So what I did is I got a piece of steel here. Actually, I took a stone to this edge and cleaned it real good because since this is a, a machined edge. So I took a stone and cleaned it and kind of flattened it out really good. I took a piece of steel here. It's nothing special, but I took it and filed it. Made sure there was no high spots on it. I marked it. And then I drilled a hole in the middle there. So that sets sets across on that machine surface. And then my depth mic sticks down through that hole. So when I move this to the other side, I just make sure I keep it that's this the top and that's the front. I don't want to flip it around and mess myself up, start getting goofy measurements. So anyway, I did some measuring. Uh, the right side measures 5.407 and the left side is 5.4035. So this right side is three and a half thousandths lower than the left side. So that crank is, is dropped a little bit. So it kind of gives me a little bit of a baseline anyway. I know I got to get that crank shimmed up to at least try and get it somewhat straight. And I don't know how straight, I would assume these are gotta be pretty straight because this base is probably bolted down somewhere when they machined this flange. So I'm assuming this flange is probably pretty square with, with these machine surfaces. I don't have a mic long enough to double check it because that's like eight inches. So we're just going to have to cross our fingers and go with it. I think what I'm going to do though, you can see there's like a quarter inch gap around here. That's just a, like an air gap in the oil. Any oil that leaks past the bearing falls down in that trough and goes back into the crankcase. So I'm going to, meet, I'm going to machine a bushing that goes around this crankshaft. And I'm going to machine it so it fits in that groove right there. And, it, and when I do it, I'll try it so it's, it will hold that crank up a little bit. So when I pour it, it, it should kind of self-center itself in that little trough. Little air gap, whatever you want to call it. And I got an old cylinder sleeve. This is how that... Old McCormick gearing ain't no good, so I might cut a piece of this off. It's pretty close. It'll slide over that crank if I do a little buffing and polishing. So I'm gonna cut that off and then machine the outside that outside of it so it'll hold that crank up straight. And then I'll be just about ready to pour. I got my heater on the way. Um, I got my ladle out here. I went ahead and melted some. These are all the pieces that I pull out of the bottom, the broken pieces, and I just melted them down with a little torch. Kind of poured them into a little ingot. That's probably a pound's worth anyway. I don't know. My next my next thing here is is this ladle going to hold enough material to pour that bearing? So that'll be the next question. I think I'm going to melt all that out of there, stick it in here, melt it down, and see how much this will hold. At least I'll get a little better idea. But.